religious violence between the Burmese Buddhist majority, Rohingya Muslims and other ethnic groups has existed for decades in Burma, if not centuries. However, over the last 12 months, what's been classed by both Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch as a wave of ethnic cleansing has been sweeping across various townships in Arakan state in the country. The United Nations estimates that around 140,000 people have fled widespread oppression and brutal violence to makeshift refugee camps, with many dying unnecessarily. There's lots of reports of you know, children dying of dysentery and other illnesses that are completely preventable and, and curable, but there isn't the, the support getting through to the camps. The majority of people are still living in makeshift camps, uh, meaning a shelter made out of straw, wood, some rice bags and some plastic sheet, sheeting on rice paddies, on areas which are anyways prone to be flooded. I can't believe that British government and the rest of the EU countries turned a blind eye against this situation in Burma and prioritize trade and investment. International community have to take serious action to protect Rohingya people. It's taken some time, but now Barack Obama has spoken up and there seems to be a glimmer of hope for an end to the violence. Burma is uh, predominantly Buddhist country, it's a, you know, but it's not a Buddhist country. It is a country made up of many different ethnic groups, many ethnic minorities, and many different religions. And, and this is what goes to the root of why there has been dictatorship and human rights abuses and incidents like what's taking place in Rakhine State and Kachin, which is the, the vision of the central governments of Burma since independence, which has been that Burma is a Burman Buddhist country, and they try to impose and Burmanize the rest of the ethnic minorities and religions in the country. And the alternative vision of Burma is one which is a multi-religious, multi-ethnic country. There have been various uprisings throughout the decades, more recently since World War II. However, it's the major clashes in 2012 which have caused very serious concern. And the handling of the situation is in sharp contrast to the country's media-friendly face. Burma's being held up as a pillar of democracy. Political prisoners have been freed, elections have been held, powerful heads of state have visited, and sanctions have been lifted. I was uh, walking around last Saturday in, uh, in one of the camps in, uh, uh, in Poktau, and there are people uh, started to flee during the night to other camps. Uh, because they were very afraid for the upcoming rain and upcoming uh, storm, so people would go by boat uh, during the night to another camp. The other camps are also in quite a poor setting, but that apparently is already paradise compared to the, to the camp where, uh, where I was. Médecins Sans Frontières has been providing aid and health care in Burma for the last 22 years, 18 of those in Rakhine State. Where we, before the violence, we were running primary health care, uh, HIV, TB and malaria treatments. And then when the violence uh, happened, we of course uh, reacted to what we uh, saw around us, providing uh, mental health care, primary care, nutritional care, However, the intense media interest from world leaders focusing in part on the poster child of Burma's new era, former political prisoner Aung San Suu Kyi, appears to be shrouding the harsh consequences of this conflict to the frustration of many. What exactly do you want to happen? What needs to happen to help your people? Well, firstly, international community have to take action immediately to provide humanitarian aid all the areas of Arakan. Sitwe, Pakta, Miao'u, Maundo, Butinao, other Rohingyas who are facing, you know, restriction of movement. They can't buy food, they can't go to hospital and many IDPs in Sitwe. They have to provide all of the Rohingyas in Arakan state, they have to provide humanitarian aid to save, the, to protect the Rohingyas. Secondly, international community including EU, UK government and US government they have to support UN Commission of Inquiry 
crime against humanity and ethnic cleansing is taking place in our Ghana state against the Rohingyas. There need to be justice and accountability to bring those, you know, perpetrators to the justice. It's claimed that much of the violence stems from decades of oppression against the Rohingya people by security forces and the police, so almost endorsed by the Burmese government. The following footage contains intense scenes of graphic violence. When this violence um, began in June, there were police and security forces that were side by side with those committing the attacks and, and there was many eyewitnesses to, to give testimony to that. Um, then you've seen um, the violence that happened in um, October. There were still clearly uh, some police and security forces involved in that and colluding and assisting with that. The Burmese army was brought in to try and sort of tackle some of the violence that that happened in June. And the, some Rohingya people told us that at first it did help calm the situation, but quite quickly there were also incidents of soldiers and others being involved in the, the human rights abuses that have been taking place. What we've seen with the pattern of violence in Burma and the fact that human rights abuses at the moment seem to be increasing in their seriousness is that the message President Sein Sein has got from the international community is that he can act with impunity. IB Times UK exclusively revealed the sinister actions of a 45-year-old Buddhist monk who, fresh from serving a nine-year jail term for inciting anti-Muslim prejudice, has crept back into his old ways. But this time he's sending his sermons of hate around the world using social media. Um, his video has been uploaded on YouTube and uh, followed by thousands of people. And um, he's also the leader of 969 campaign, which is a sort of apartheid-like campaign. Um, in these videos, he encourages people to boycott uh, Muslim businesses and communities. In these videos, he, uh, he warned Buddhists uh, to against Muslims, he accused them of raping uh, Buddhist women, and um, he claims that they're taking over. Uh, they're too rich, and uh, they're uh, through their mosque they're kind of implanting some foreign influence inside the country. Zoya Fan knows the reality of extreme violence and fear. She's Burmese born and from the Karen ethnic group. As a young girl, she and her family were forced to flee from vicious attacks on the village she called home, not once, but twice. We always wanted to go home. And even in refugee camp, it wasn't safe because the enemy came in crossing the border into Thailand and then came in the refugee camp and opened fire and burned down houses. So we still had to uh, fear for our lives. So two years later, um, my family, we went back to Burma, but in another part, not in the same village. And one day when I was doing my school works, uh, it's, it was homework for my exams, final year exams. And I was studying and suddenly I heard mortar bomb exploded. And my mother called out every one of us. She said, run, run, everyone who had to run. We are under attack, she said. So again, we were fleeing for our lives. I still remember children were crying, older people were begging for help and the situation was very chaotic and very worrying and we ended up again in refugee camp in Thailand. How strange do you think it is that Aung San Suu Kyi and her fellow activists are not being at all vocal about this situation? Well, Aung San Suu Kyi and their party, the NPL, they're looking to take power in 2015 national elections. She recently appeared in a military parade uh, side by side with the same people that jailed there for 20 years. So of course, uh, you know, they're trying to 
get the majority of votes in uh, 2015 and uh, they don't want to disappoint the Buddhist majority in the country. Many close to the heart of the violence in Burma find the wall of silence from Aung San Suu Kyi deeply upsetting. We did campaign to release political prisoners including Aung San Suu Kyi and other Rohingya organizations around the world. We supported her. We supported human rights and democracy for Burma. We feel that we belong to Burma. We are a part of our country. Why they are neglecting the Rohingya people, it is very tragedy. And now, the most influential of world leaders, Barack Obama, has told the president of Burma that the violence must stop and Muslim communities should be included in the political process. Uh, I also shared with uh, President Sain uh, our deep concern about communal violence that has been directed uh, at uh, Muslim communities inside of Myanmar. The displacement of people, the violence directed towards them, uh, needs to stop uh, and uh, we are prepared to uh, work in any ways that we can with uh, both the government of Myanmar and the international community to assure that uh, people are getting the help that they need, uh, but more importantly that uh, their rights uh, and their dignity is recognized uh, over the long term. And no one can give us an indication of what ethnic communities in Burma want more than anything else for the country than Zoya, a former refugee. What we need to see in Burma in the future is where everyone can have freedom of expression, not just some people in central Burma, but everyone, regardless of our race, our ethnicities, um, our gender, our religion, everyone are equal and treated equally.